What is going on everyone? My name is Jared and this is another episode of TechWorks and today, as you can see, we are talking about Android P. So this was talked about during Google's I.O. 2018 event not so long ago and basically it is the next mobile operating system, the next iteration of Android for this year. So being one of the lucky few who do have a Pixel and actually now a... Uh, other manufacturers are getting in on the development uh, status of this build. Um, you get to test it out. So we're going to dive in, take a peek at some of the new and interesting things of Android P. So a lot of things have changed in Android P and a lot of them are little, but there's also some really big differences too. So right off the bat, we can see that we have a different layout for the status bar, right? So we now have the clock on the left and some icons on the right. And actually this new status bar menu only supports up to four icons at a time because it is incorporating the idea in, of in case you have a notch. But that isn't the only thing that obviously has changed. So if you look down here at the bottom, you can see that the custom back, home, and recents button has changed. So I have activated gestures on this device. Basically, you get this little nub down here, and if you press it, you go home, you swipe up, you get your recents, as well as some recent icon or some recent apps you've used and you swipe up one more time and you get your app list. Now, you also can look at this line right here, which are some suggested actions that you look at a lot. So for example, I was watching YouTube last of Jacksepticeye, as well as checking the temperature in my master bedroom. So that comes up uh, with different things from time to time, basically saying, hey, we see you do this a lot, you wanna do it again. Uh, the actual app drawer hasn't really changed much besides that top menu of your most used apps as well as these little tidbits that you use. Now you can see at the bottom, a back button does show up from time to time and it does exactly what it normally does is put you back a page. So something else with the status bar is if you swipe to the left or right, I think it's actually just left. Let me double check that. Yeah. So if you swipe to the right, you get your recents and then you can drag this, the nub left and right to access different recent cards. So this is developer preview too, meaning that a lot of this is subject to change, but I know gestures are certainly staying. Uh, they might get better. They might add some other different options and you obviously can disable gestures if you don't like them. Cruising right along, you have your quick notifications or your quick toggles up at the top here. And not much has changed other than the fact of you now have circles instead of how the old tiles looked. Um, this People might like the circles, people might not like the circles. I mean, to me, it's kind of a moot point. I really don't care. I think this looks very nice, looks very polished, and it certainly appeals to Google's material design language, which they've been trying to push across. Also, if I had notifications up here, they have gotten a rounded corner, as you can see right here with the weather right there. It gets got nice rounded corners, as well as the idea of quick reply has changed a little bit in the sense that when you drag it down and you hit reply, it's going to show the last few messages that you replied to versus just the latest thing that the conversation said and then what you said. So that is kind of nice. You can obviously choose whether or not how you want your notifications, which apps you want to show, things of that nature. Uh, you still have your Google search bar at the bottom and you have a little different uh, pop-up menu when you long press on the home screen. So on here, you also have a few more options as far as what your icons look like. So say, uh, you know, stock Android doesn't have a lot in terms of themings uh, unless you root or use, um, a theming engine, right? But anyway, you can change your icons, your at-a-glance, have your notification dot, as well as having new icons show up. 
when you install them. So if you go to your icon shape, so this definitely was an Android 8.0 and 8.1, but say I want the uh, kind of square, kind of circle icon motif, obviously you can change that in there and it will affect most of the icons. As you can see, most of them, not including the folders, have changed besides say the My Chevy app uh, and Spotify and things of the nature. So not everything is gonna change when you change the look of your icons. Most of the time, a lot of your stock apps, most apps will with the new adaptive icons idea, but uh, not all of them. Obviously you go back, home settings, icon shape. I'm just gonna use system default because I like the circles. Um, let's dive into the settings a little bit. You can still get to the settings by pulling it down. You have a much more colorful looking settings menu now. So everything has its own little color. It's kind of condensed. The biggest things that's changed other than just the grouping of settings, which is more or less the same, is actually battery. So Android P, I hope it's called Popsicle. That's what I'm hoping for, Android Popsicle, or a lot of people are talking about Peppermint. But anyway, uh, they have this thing called adaptive battery now. And basically what that is going to do is exactly what it says. To extend battery life, adaptive battery limits battery for infrequently used apps. Your phone will learn how you use apps over time. Notifications may be delayed. So what does that mean? Um, more or less what that's gonna do is say you use obviously Facebook, your social medias, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever the most, it's gonna keep those readily available and it's basically going to uh, put the other apps into a low usage mode. Maybe it'll reduce the amount of times it, it checks, it refreshes, maybe it puts it in kind of a pseudo hibernation sort of thing, but it's gonna start to learn what apps you use the most, what apps you don't, so maybe it doesn't put a lot of resources. It also gives you some good information uh, right off this screen without having to dive in. You get your screen usage since full charge. Your full charge lasts about a day, one hour and 15 minutes, I'm at 83%. Um, now you can also customize battery saver before you only had three or four increments that it could turn on by. I believe it was like 10, 15 and 20 or something like that. It was towards the low end, but now you could have battery saver turn on anything from 75 or lower. So say you get the 50% and you freak out, you can automatically have battery saver turn on and not have to worry about getting down into the twenties. I'll keep it at 25 because I think that's just fine for me. Other than that, you also have some different options. You have night light status that which you can turn on or off and adjust how much that blue light gets filtered. You always have your natural boosted and saturated modes now on the Pixel 2 XL. And also just to note, you have a different font that they're using now across the whole system UI. And I believe it's Google's own font, but it does look nice. It's not the classic uh, Roboto font, which Android has used for a very long time. It's <clears throat> something different. Oh, perfect. This is a notification, so I get to show you that. So it shows up. I can hit reply right from here. Say, uh, let me focus it in real quick. We'll say, what's up, if I can spell. And then when you send it, it's going to show what I say. And it'll keep going for a certain amount of messages from there. Uh, the next thing that I really noticed that I thought was different, I can confirm nor deny if it is or not, but when I get a phone call, I remember before having it come up in the status bar saying that you've had a phone call and just show up. If I exit out of the main dialer screen, it'll just stay up at the top as like a notification. Now it shows up as like a chat head, similar to what Facebook Messenger does, and it'll just put it on the side. You can drag it around, click on it, hit end, and it doesn't really interfere with the top of your phone. Maybe that's to talk about uh, notches or things like that, but basically it makes it less obtrusive, at least to me. Other than that, there is a lot of under the hood improvements for Android P, a lot of speed things, a lot of optimization for different processors. It's supposed to be um, a lot better. I mean, I've noticed actually not substantially better battery on the Pixel 2 XL here, but decent, uh, certainly decent. I was comparing it to my S9 Plus Sorry about that, got a phone call in the meantime on both phones, so I had to take a break. So, 
As you can see, the notification on your lock screen, you can extend it by dragging it down. You see the conversation or let it go and is what you last see. I haven't noticed, um, like I was saying before, I've noticed slightly better battery. Maybe that has to do with the adaptive battery technology, uh, algorithm, whatever they're doing with that. And there was also a lot of other stuff going on at Google I.O. Uh, <laughs> last week. So I'm sure this is going to change. And uh, I expect it to. I know they're saying they do want to have a clear all for your apps. Right now you have to swipe up like you do with uh, the iPhone. And that's fine. It doesn't bother me. You can still long press on this home nub. Uh, to get your Google Assistant squeeze still is here for Google Assistant as well. Things are nice and speedy. I know some people have said that after a while the Pixel 2 was uh, kind of slowing down with the squeeze functionality. And of course, when you swipe to the right, you get um, your Google feed, which is, you know, the same just as it's always been. So I expect a lot more changes to happen in developer preview three and four, which is said to the third one is supposed to release early June and then July with final uh, builds coming out around August, which is gonna be a month or so away from the Pixel 3 launch. So that's kind of my first look at Android P. Uh, I have noticed a little bit of bugginess with certain things. I know for me, uh, for a fact that some Bluetooth issues as far as connecting with my headphones where they're connected but no music plays out. Um, a few different crashes happen with certain apps and most of that's probably to do with the app not being updated. And one thing on crashed apps, if you open an app that doesn't work or uh, usually would become unresponsive, instead of having the OS basically hang at the unresponsive app screen and let it try to do its thing, Android P now crashes that app almost immediately gives you the such and such app has crashed and then kicks you back to your home screen. Uh, I don't know if that's good or bad. I mean, it obviously saves some time than waiting around for an unresponsive app, but I don't think necessarily that, you know, it's, it's not a good or bad thing, it's just different. Um, anyway, I'm gonna report back to you as much as I can on different findings, especially as Android P develops. And we get some new things, uh, you know, just like with any beta, or any test or developer preview, things are always subject to change, always subject to get better. One thing I really like, and I'll end on this note, is the new animations I think are really nice. They kind of, they zoom in and up, and then they kind of slide out to the left when you do that, as well as, um, really, that, that happens with anything, but the whole animation scheme has changed, and it's really nice. It gives it a nice flow to it. I haven't had any problems with that so far. So anyway, my name is Jared Iron from TechWorks. Hope you enjoyed this little first look at the Android P Developer Preview 2. First look for me, uh, I've used it for about a week now, so I wanted to report after I kind of flushed it out a little bit. So with that, if you do have a Pixel 2 XL, you can head over to the Android P Developer page to enroll your device. I believe it works on Pixel, Pixel 2. Uh, OnePlus 6 that was just talked about today. Uh, I'm recording this the day before I released the video. So that was talked about uh, getting the developer preview. Uh, some various other devices, check out, their, uh, <laughs> check out their page for how to get it on certain devices. You can also check out Wear OS 3 if you have a Huawei Watch 2. Uh, so it's nice that Google's opening up their beta program to more than just their flagships. I think that's a sign that they really want people to get on board with software updates early, especially with Project Treble and things of that nature. So anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you again in the next video. See you later.